What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Out There, Omega Edition. This is a game I've taken a look at before, in fact. This is a game that the developers sent to me when they were still developing it for Android. This was, I took a look at this back in January 2014. Yeah, they sent me this along with an Android emulator software so that I could take a look at it back then. And it was kind of cool, kind of cool. Uh, they've done it up, they've added a lot more stuff, uh, hence the Omega edition, There's a lot more content. And it's now out on PC, it's available on Steam. So I want to take a look at it, see what's changed, what they've added, what's different, and and uh, what, what more there is to add, because when I saw it before, it was still an unfinished product of the game before it was even on Android. So it's been a while, it's been a while. Let's take a look at the settings first. Uh, we've got resolution options, graphics, you simply have uh, normal or high. It's this very stylized kind of look, it's all 2D graphics, so there's nothing really terribly demanding. So that's probably about as much as you need, I'm not really sure what the difference is between the two anyway. Uh, we've got uh, language options there. Skip travel animation is a checkbox here. I'm going to leave that off because I'd like you to see the animations, but nonetheless, in the course of gameplay, you're going to be traveling a lot, and if you want, don't want to have to watch the animation every time, it's nice that there's an option there as well. Uh, you've got music and sound effects on separate slides as well, so that's cool, that's fair enough, that's great, that's good to see. Uh, there's no key rebindings or anything, but quite frankly, it's all mouse-driven anyway, so it's not like you would particularly want that. So there you go, those are your, those are your options. Uh, let's continue on with the game. I've got a game in progress. It's kind of a roguelike -y thing, so you'd kind of maybe expect me to start from the top, but I'm, I'm, I've got a good run going on, so I'd kind of like to uh, bring you in halfway through, to be honest, because uh, that uh, probably lets me show you off some of the mechanics a bit more. So we've got this star map. It's all done top-down 2D. It's just a two-dimensional grid of the stars. We can zoom in a bit, zoom out a bit. Uh, we've got two... We've got, this is obviously the dot in the center is where our spaceship is, uh, for we are lost in space and trying to get home is basically the gist of the story. We're an astronaut stranded in a spaceship and trying to get to our target, which, as you can see from the arrows, is somewhere down in this corner of the screen, somewhere way across the galaxy in that kind of direction. There are, in fact, it's hard to see there, there are actually three arrows there. I, uh, basically, through things that I've encountered, I kind of have a few different goals available to me at different star systems. They're all kind of in the same direction, so I'm kind of heading, heading the same way. But if I go to the green one, I'll like reunite with a human colony in space. If I go to the red one, some weird alien intelligence has told me to go there. And the yellow one, is, uh, I've had that since the start of the game. That was like the, my first destination that they offered up. Uh, we've got two circles around my spaceship. You got the kind of the white circle around the outside is basically the limit of my vision. Uh, that's if I click on stars outside that range, I can find out very little information about them. If I click on, if I in fact, if I click on stars outside the range, I can't even click on stars outside the range. If I click on stars within the range, I can see what kind of star it is uh, and how much it would cost to get there if I could get there, but I can't. It's just, it's too much. Within the green range is literally the limits of how far my spaceship can go. So if I click on that, I can see that it is blue giants. It will cost me uh, 18 fuel and 6 oxygen are uh, two of my resources that I've got. And that's going to cost me those to travel there and I can click travel to head there. Uh, some of the stars I've been to, you can see, you can take a look at them, see what they are. There's a red dwarf there that I've been to, there's a white dwarf there, a yellow dwarf. You get a whole range of different things. This is the current system I'm in, I'm around a red dwarf star. It currently has available to us a rocky planet, which is rich in metallic ore. Travelling pretty much anywhere is going to cost me fuel, as well as a little bit of oxygen. I can travel to the star. There's not a lot of use to that. I vaguely recall back in the Android build, you could harvest fuel from the star, and indeed the stars say rich in fuel, but I try orbiting one of the stars, and in exchange for taking a bunch of hull damage, it literally didn't actually let me get any fuel from the stars. So I was a little bit disappointed about that. I'm not quite sure what the point of orbiting stars is now, other than to get your ship wrecked. Uh, so we can visit different planets, different stars, different objects in, this, in the star systems, and we can gain resources. We click on our ship down here, we can see the ship that I'm currently in and the resources I've got. You start out in a fairly generic, ordinary, human-looking spaceship. I found this one drifting along in space, and you absolutely have the option to commandeer any vehicles you come across. You're like, oh, this ship appears to be abandoned, and they might have better resources in it. They might have, might have better equipment. This one 
This one literally had better equipment and more storage space, so I've just straight up taken the upgrade. It was like, okay, uh, this one already, this, this one has shielding. My other one didn't have shields, so now I've got a shield on this ship. And it has 16 storage space. Your default ship only has 13 storage space. So each of these slots counts as one storage space. Equipment and items that you're carrying around with you all take up one storage space. You start with 13, but you can easily upgrade that if you find any other ships drifting around in space. So you can see there's a lot of elements going on. We've got helium, iron, oxygen, uh, kind of core, core components here. Hydrogen and helium will go into this slot to refill your fuel if your fuel's down. Oxygen we can drag into the oxygen slot over here to refill the oxygen if we start running low. And hull is repaired by dragging and dropping iron onto it. You'll pick up a bunch of other elements as well. We've got gold, which I've gotten quite lucky to grab that. It's taken me a long time to actually find any of that. So then when I did get it... Uh, I made off with as much as I could carry, actually. Uh, thorium is used for crafting things. Platinum is used for crafting things. Uh, Omega uh, can be used for a bunch of stuff. Apparently, it can be used for all of those. I'm not sure exactly how much you get out of it, but Omega has a whole variety of uses. Things can break if you need to repair them. Omega will often do the job. Otherwise, you'll need to spend various resources on doing that. If we click on that, these are all the technologies I have available to me, so I can craft any one of these components and put them in one of those slots if I wanted to. Uh, at the minute, obviously, I've got no slots, so I can't do that, but as you go along, you'll in interact with different things and can find new technologies. Uh, I would love to be able to craft a geo scanner. that seems useful. Uh, life Seed, I'm not sure what that one does. Uh, it can transform a rocky planet into a garden planet suitable for life. Oh, that's quite interesting. I hadn't actually seen I'd got that. So if I can acquire some carbon, which actually wouldn't be too hard, along with some omega, apparently I can transform rocky planets into life-filled planets which is quite interesting. So let's uh, let's head on our journey and let's see what we can do. Like I say, we've got these resources. I'm pretty well stocked for a lot of things. Helium is a very good fuel. It's twice as efficient as hydrogen. One hydrogen restores two fuel. One helium restores four fuel. Uh, one oxygen restores two oxygen up here. And one iron restores two hull. So let's, uh, let's have, a look, have a look at our current system. As I say, we've got a rocky planet here, which is rich in metallic ore. You're going to get, if you if you go and mine a rocky planet, you're going to predominantly get iron. You'll sometimes pick up a few things, maybe bits of platinum, thorium, a few little bits and pieces. I don't need too much from this system. I mean, obviously my inventory is fairly full anyway, so in, it's in fact entirely full. So there's not much I'm really going to get from a, a rocky planet, to be honest. So I'd be best off heading on my way. So if we head down here, we've got a blue giant. 18 fuel and 6 oxygen. Travel through. This is this is your travel animation that you do have the option to skip in the system. And ta-da! We land here. It's day 243. I don't dream of space. I scarcely get enough sleep. And when I do, I dream of what I miss. The smell of wet foliage and grilled meat. The taste of chocolate and the feeling of being near other people. So, you get a little bit. That's actually a fairly uneventful one. Sometimes when you go to a planet, in fact, the majority of time when you go to a new system, uh, you'll get new events will happen. Sometimes they'll be good, sometimes it'll be beneficial. It'll be like, oh, I happened to find a derelict spaceship, I harvested it for its fuel tanks, and suddenly you've got, boom, plus 30 fuel or whatever. Uh, other times it'll be, oh, you ran into an asteroid field and you took some hull damage, bam, minus 20 hull damage, and you have to spend resources to repair it. So it's very sort of adventure game book, you're a fighting fantasy, choose your own adventure kind of thing. Uh, in many ways, it's got all the elements of what I would describe as fighting fantasy bullshit that that has in such, that it'll often provide you with decisions to make. It's like, would you like to interact with this or would you like to not interact with it? And you've got no idea whether interacting with that thing is going to be a positive or negative outcome, unless you've run into it before, because it's it's all procedurally generated, it's a bit roguelike, so you can run into the same circumstances again. I've only run into one thing uh, twice. Uh, everything else has been fairly unique. I've done I've done two short playthroughs where I died quickly, and this is my third playthrough where I've actually done reasonably well, and I've run into the same scenario on two occasions. Uh, second time, obviously, I knew what I was doing because I'd seen it before. So in this system we got, still says rich in fuel, I still don't think I want to fly around it. We've got a gas giant, it is in a risky orbit, so it'll take me, that will deal some hull damage. It doesn't tell you how much hull damage you're going to take, so you, sometimes it's just a little bit, and you might take one or two hull damage, and sometimes I've seen it deal like a straight up 40 hull damage, which is just insane and quite excessive, I do feel. But you can't tell until you get close, so if you don't have a strong hull, it's probably probably a bit of a risk running to running towards a gas giant to get fuel but if you're short on fuel maybe you'll be desperate and maybe you'll need to make that maneuver 
If I want some metallic ores, I could go to this rocky planet. Uh, I am... Um, again, I'm pretty okay for a lot of things. I will probably... Probably drop the helium in there. Uh, I'm not sure what else I need. I don't need to repair my hull. I don't need to repair... I'm kind of in a place where I should really, I think, just be making my way towards the... Towards my objective because I'm good for resources. Going mining and gathering things at this stage for me actually isn't the most advantageous because I'd be... I don't know, I've got nowhere to put the resources if I use it. So I could just carry on my way towards the red giant. Let's do that. Let's just carry on our way. See what interesting things we can get to. There's a skip button down there. I have run into a couple bugs where if you click on things like the skip button when the cutscenes and things are happening, it can bug out and it just won't progress the game and you literally have to quit the game and relaunch it. It does save the game each time you arrive at a new system, uh, but... In that instance, you know, if it breaks on the transition screen, uh, well, then you have to go back to the previous planet and everything you've just done is undone. Which isn't great, but uh, I suppose if you s turned off the skip cutscenes, that would certainly fix at least half of the problem there. I was on this wonderful beach on a planet inhabited by stunning women. Yes, it was another dream, a dream that ended with a red alert and all my alarms blaring. I ran to the cockpit. A comet field was fast approaching. I did my best to dodge them while rubbing sleep out of my eyes. One of them slammed against the starboard quarter. Hull is intact. One of my devices got damaged. Boom, solar sails are broken. So my solar sails, let's see, that's these guys. They... Ooh, there we go. Uh, my solar sails are basically... Harnessing the solar winds of stars to travel slightly faster interstellar. So when I'm traveling between planets, I go a little. I can go a little bit further than I would. It adds more power to my ship, uh, and I quite liked having that around. I can dismantle it and get one gold back out of it. I can spend two gold to repair it, or I can use one omega to repair it. Gold's kind of rare, but to be fair, omega's even rarer. So I feel like omega's the kind of thing you want to hang on to until you need it desperately. Uh, so I'm just going to repair it with gold. There we go. So I didn't really want to have to do that, but again, like I say, it's the old fighting fantasy bullshit. It's this has happened. Screw you. You have no say in the matter. Deal with it. Okay. So what have we got? Uh, let's check out the system. What have we got in the system? We have we have a rocky planet and a gas giant. There are garden planets which have life on them as well, and you can meet alien species and interact with them. But they're less common. The two main ones you're going to get are the metallic planets, which give you most of your iron and the gas giants which are going to get you most of your fuel so let's try going and getting some fuel just to show you how that mechanic works we are going to orbit around the planet that's going to cost us some fuel going to cost us some oxygen uh, I should probably spend the rest of that you're going to want to make before you do this you don't have any option to do anything with your cargo once you've harvested materials so you do want to make sure you've got as much uh, cargo space free as humanly possible before you actually collect this. So I've got no other space that I can really free up at this point. Uh, I'm not low enough on oxygen to need to spend the oxygen. I'm not low enough on hull to need to really spend the iron. So that one slot's just gonna have to do me here. So we've got probe down here. This goes into the probe interface. We have a hydrogen probe and we can choose how far into the planet we want to send it. Uh, I don't know why you're allowed to select zero, it just tells you to do it again if you do zero. So it costs one fuel per depth that you send it down to, and the bar changes colour depending on how dangerous it is. If you send it down 10 kilometres, uh, you're going to come back with a lot of materials, but it's a, there's a very high chance that your hydrogen probe is just going to break. It's going to hit a high pressure pocket and it's just going to ruin your probe, and you're going to have to rebuild it. It's going to cost you a bunch of iron to repair that. Uh, so I usually try and stick around the yellow zone. I guess if you just do it green, you're playing it safe, and you probably not much chance that's going to break. I usually do about seven, just top of the yellow zone. It seems to have worked out fairly well for me. Oh, but there we go. It broke. Sudden pressure surge broke my probe. Ta da! So I broke the hydrogen, got the platinum. Uh, platinum is part of it, part of the hydrogen probe. So, well, there's my fuel. That's all I got, and that's not much. So, I don't think I'd want to risk doing that again. This has not been a very profitable planet. Uh, you do get diminishing returns. The more times you probe the planet, the less stuff you'll get out of it. So, it just it seems strange given the entire planet's going to be mostly fuel. You'd have thought I got more out of it, but hey, you could just do a lap around the planet and go to a more rich part. But there you go. So the hydrogen probe, I got the platinum back, which is exactly the same as you'd get if you dismantled it. It's going to cost me two iron, and I got my platinum back so I can craft the hydrogen probe. There we go. That's going to go back in its slot. So I basically, that just used up two uh, iron. Uh, I think that's basically, I think it gives you the dismantle stuff back, so the, the one platinum. Uh, because, well, if it didn't, there's a very real chance you could, one of those things would just screw you. Because if you don't have any platinum at all, if you're not carrying platinum around with you, 
uh, and that broke, you will now have no way of getting any fuel. Which means your journey is going to end very soon, so that would be kind of... That, that would be... That would be a really bad move for them to do. They would just ruin a lot of journeys very, very early on, I think, if that were the case. Alright, so I don't think we're going to find a whole lot more intriguing in this system. I don't want, can I reach this one? That one is a supernova, which doesn't sound like that's a safe place to travel. But my other, my only other option is to go kind of the long way around. I have to head up and then across and then down this way. Uh, I'm going to do it. Let's go to the supernova. This might not end well for me, but... Doesn't seem like a good place you'd want to be. Uh, the stars don't necessarily seem to correlate to things being really bad for you. I would have thought flying into the heart of a supernova probably wouldn't end too well, but you know, nonetheless, it doesn't seem to have been too bad. Found something amazing deep inside the core of an iron-rich moon, a construction full of working machines working for millions of years, building small probes and launching them into space. Apparently all that's left of a civilization long gone millennia ago. Tried to explore it, but an automated defense system fired on me and drove me off. Uh, that's just boom damage there you go So I can fix that up. I've got iron so I can patch up my hull a bit A little bit of iron left over which is kind of annoying cause That's taking up, that's taking up inventory slots. That I don't want it to be doing. I'm now completely out of fuel So I'm gonna have to hope yeah, we've got we've got a gas giant there. We should be okay for a little while uh, We've got a garden planet definitely want to have a look at this. Let's go to the garden planet so if you land on a garden planet, the garden planets always have a breathable atmosphere, so it will instantly refill your oxygen meter. So yeah, breathable atmosphere restored the oxygen supply. Uh, we can encounter life. There is life on this planet. The garden planets always have life as well. Uh, by talking with different alien species, you can learn bits of words. And quite frankly, every alien in the galaxy speaks exactly the same language. They all speak... Well, yeah, alienese is what it is, I suppose. It's, yeah, if, if it wasn't a thing in Future Armor, it is now. There is alienese, and you'll learn bits of alienese. So, I know the word life, I know the word technology. Uh, something, 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 life. Something, 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 technology. We, something, something, you, something, 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 something. Uh, I can't really make much of that. Once you know enough, well, enough of the words, you can kind of bumble your way through conversations and trade with them for resources and they'll give you cool stuff. Uh, in this particular instance, I don't think I know enough about this to really get anything out of it. You can then approve or disapprove. So I will approve. Oh, okay, so something, 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 me give technology. So if I, I can then offer him either iron or thorium. I have abundant supplies of iron, I'll give him some iron. Something, something, something. Alien receives my gift, but doesn't seem to like it. Okay, so I've lost the iron, but I've learned a new word. So next time I run into an alien race, if they use the word Albamt, I know that means fear, because they all speak alienese. So in this instance, that hasn't really worked out for me, but each conversation you do will make the next conversation a little bit more likely for it to, to go your way. And the more you know about alien words, uh, the better the conversations will go. I mean, sometimes you'll find relics on planets that'll be like, oh, you learned a bunch of words from this weird alien scriptures and things from this long dead civilization. And they're interesting as well. So, what have we got on here? We've got... I don't... well, I don't need to top up my oxygen because I've got... I've just filled up my oxygen. I've still got loads in reserve. Drilling on these planets... well... I, I'll do a little drill. Let's do a little one. Let's go down three. I've got some... oh, gold! Hello, I do want some gold. Oxygen... I did need the carbon for something, certainly. Uh, I feel like I also needed cobalt for something, if memory serves, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I don't know if I need that. I don't know if I need the thorium. I really don't. This is, this is, uh, there's a lot of this resource management trying to figure out what you need and what you don't need. Platinum has been very useful for me throughout my journey, so I'm kind of hanging on to that. Gold certainly is used for making a lot of exotic stuff. Uh, the others are fairly basic resources that you kind of want to have on you anyway. And thorium. Thorium is the only one I'm kind of umming and ahhing about. I don't know whether I want thorium or not. I'm quite sure I need one cobalt. I do need carbon in order to make that terraforming device that I was looking at. I could go for a bigger ship. I did pass up a bigger ship earlier on. There was a ship that had like 20 slots, but it had loads of damage and I didn't have the resources to repair it entirely. So I would actually have been... Actually, I would have carried less stuff if I'd taken the bigger ship because there was so much damage it had less space in it. If I run across a ship, I'll probably be able to show you that mechanic, but... 
as it is. I guess I'm done there. That's that's drilling. It's exactly the same as the uh, as the probing mechanic, though. It works exactly the same. You still got the bar. It still changes color depending on how deep you're going. If you go too deep, you might run into lava and it will melt your probe. And the probe, to be fair, is literally just made of iron. So if that gets destroyed, it gets entirely destroyed. But you can repair it with four iron. It's always worth carrying some iron around with you because everything that gets repaired pretty much needs iron. I know it's useful for repairing the hull, but if you don't have any to repair your stuff when you need to repair stuff, uh, that's going to come back to bite you in the ass as well. So it's always worth carrying around at least some amount of iron. Uh, I can do that. This is, what, this is what annoys me about the drilling part. I wish you had access to your cargo whilst you're drilling because it's like, well, if I use up something to repair my hull here now... Uh, I could then make the space and I could have carried the carbon as well. I could have brought the carbon with me. In this instance, I actually can't because, well, I've finished drilling. So now I can make... Oh, good lord. Oh, that's what I could make. I can make a death seed which will turn a star into a black hole and destroy all life within the system. Whether that's the thing I want to do at this point in time, I'm not rightly sure. I probably don't, I suspect. There is the Ansible here. The Ansible is a thing I've been looking to try and make at some point, which is why I wanted Cobalt. The Ansible detects if a star system is inhabited by alien fleets. Very useful if I need to keep a low profile. Uh, to be fair, I've not run into alien fleets, per se, so may maybe it wouldn't be so useful. I don't know. It would take up inventory space, and I'm not sure how useful it would be. I would like to use a death seed, if nothing else. I really should have taken that carbon, to be honest, but there you go. Uh, I am low on fuel, so we shall need to take off. Taking off from a planet is going to cost me more oxygen and more fuel. Uh, we're going to head... I don't necessarily... Still don't necessarily need their rocky planet, so we're going to head to the gas giant. and move into orbit around there. Send a probe down seven kilometers. That's going to bring me a ton of helium. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, the cobalt isn't anywhere near as useful as I thought it would. I was... Uh, I, again, because I can't... There's a lot of bits of interface when you're probing and drilling that I would like to be able to see, but you can't. Maybe it's a design choice. Maybe it is a design choice, but at the same time... Uh, this is one that's slightly irking me. I would like to be able to see what my crafting options are so that I know which ones are valuable and I would like to be able to, to be honest, use up the cargo on things to make some space so that I can car carry more stuff from the probe. In this instance, we're leaving the cobalt behind. I'm not going to use the cobalt. However, I will take... I'll just take that helium and just use it as a fuel source, to be quite honest. That's going to fill it up. There we go. That fills it up perfectly. That was wonderful. That's probably... In all honesty, that's probably slightly wasteful, to be fair. It probably didn't use that up entirely efficiently, but there you go. Uh, if, if there's, like, if there's one, if you're, if you're on, like, 99 fuel and put one helium in, it will use that one helium to restore one fuel, so you'd be wasting, like, three out of four of the fuel in the helium, so it's not very wasteful, but slightly. At any rate, yeah, this in space, I really wish you could get that while you're probing, but you can't. So head on our way. Let's, uh, let's head to another system. I kind of want to get some things that are really interesting. I hope something interesting happens. So, skip this, move on. Yellow Dwarf. Oh, there we go. Every so often, I'm not sure, it's not really well defined as to where these are. You just kind of run across them from time to time. You'll get a slightly more dramatic scene. So, this is one you kind of get. In the distance, there seems to be a spaceship. It's a huge one. Oh, this, oh, maybe this is what we wanted the Ansible for. Millions of other ships fly with it. This could be the alien fleet. Unbelievable, they look like humans. They don't speak the language that we know. They're talking about something about death. They're attacking. I don't know how well this is going to go for me. This is the first time I've seen something like this, to be fair. I wake up several hours later. I'm alive, things are not good. Ship's badly damaged, so are some modules. The computer's out of order. What did I just meet? A couple of mates to calculate the origin coordinates of the huge ship. What will I find in this system? Uh, I've lost hydrogen, gold, iron, oxygen, platinum, thorium. Uh, lost the technology to make subspace reactors. Lost the technology to make cryonics. Uh, which is something they have you dismantle right at the start of the game. I'm not sure how useful that is. Uh, I need to repair my gravitational sails and my drill. I think I'm probably okay to do that. Ah, so... Now, we've got, there was another arrow appeared on the map. Once again, it's all just kind of gone down into that bottom corner into one blur. I suppose as you get closer, it'll spread out. But now we've got a green arrow. I've got a fourth objective to get to, which is the origin of the fleet that just attacked me. Each time you get one of these cutscenes, you'll kind of get the, a basically some manner of objective to get to. Whether the game ends there or not, I'm not rightly sure. I've not yet got there, but... 
Uh, okay, so we've got drill needs one iron to repair that, so I can do that. That's fair enough. Drill works. What else was broken? This thing. This thing gives me a lot more power. It uses the fields of nearby stellar objects to convert it into warp thrust. Uh, I will repair that with thorium. I knew there was a reason I was carrying some thorium around. Absolutely. Uh, and I guess we're good for now. I should probably top up my fuel just a little bit. Uh, my hull's pretty okay. Oh, that could use a little bit of a patch up. And oxygen. Uh, oxygen, I usually don't like to spend until I absolutely have to, just because there's a chance that you will run across any number of things. You could find a ship filled with oxygen, or you could run across a garden planet, and it'll just go, boom, right, your oxygen is full now. So, personally speaking, I have been kind of holding off on collecting that. Since, yeah, there's a garden planet, there we go, I could just land there and collect oxygen as well, and then we've got two gas giants for a bunch more fuel. Uh, so let's go look on the garden planet, let's head down. Confirm, I want to land, breathable atmosphere has restored that, they're all exactly the same. There's some really pretty scenes in this, so landing, on the, landing on the planet is always really interesting, you get some really cool stuff. I like this, that's a nice, cool alien city thing. We'll encounter their life form, their life forms are basically trees apparently. Something something fear you, are we something you evil you death? Uh, they're basically asking, am I evil? No, I'm not. So, there we go, because I knew, right, excellent. So. I know enough about what they're saying to be able to bumble my way through this conversation. I don't know the first three lines of this, something about you, me give technology, let's give him thorium. Does he like thorium? Alien doesn't like thorium. He learned, learned something, learned the word people. So in this case I should have given him the iron, the iron would have been useful. Let's drill, let's see what we can get out of this, a little bit of oxygen, top that up. Carbon, I could make the life thing, that'd be kind of interesting. Uh, cobalt, again, we established I didn't need that. I've not found any use for copper yet, and copper's quite abundant on these garden planets, so... I don't know what to do with those. Uh, right, let's head to... let's head to one of the gas giants. Let's top that up. There's just a lot of resource management and trying to make your way through the galaxy, and trying to stay alive. This is kind of a lot of the mechanics, and like I say, it's roguelike, it's because all randomly generated. You'll get random stuff all the way through. Uh, high pressure's destroyed that. Which is unfortunate. Let me rebuild. Rebuild the hydrogen probe. Okay. Uh, that's about the only time I could use resources there for anything. Um, that was not an abundant planet. So let me finish that up there. Let's... What I could do is head to that one and hope that this one's actually more rich in fuel, to be honest. What I want to do is use that up first, definitely. What I also want to do is... Do I want to craft that life seed? I don't know if I do. Yeah, I kind of do. And then I can throw that away. Yeah, I don't need. I don't need any more carbon. Okay, I'm pretty good there. Let's let, let us probe. Probe things. Get probed. Twenty hydrogen. And again, if I could use this on fuel, I would like to just dump that in the fuel tank now. I've got fourteen hydrogen there that I would immediately like to use as a fuel source to fill up my fuel tanks at this moment in time. I can't. I have no way to do that because because I built the bloody seed thing. But hey. Uh, so that's a little frustrating. Well, there you go. So yeah, that's that's most of the mechanics. That's it's it's a really interesting thing. It looks good. It's got uh, the soundtrack is done by the same composer who did um, Stanley Parable as well as some other stuff, which immediately eludes my mind. Uh, it's a great soundtrack. I'm enjoying it. It's mostly fairly ambient, spacey kind of things, but it sounds really good. It fits the game great. Like I say, the style is this comic book thing, and it looks beautiful as well. And the mechanics, I think, are... I don't know. I, well, I've shown you what they are. I think it's up to you to decide whether it's the kind of thing you'd enjoy or not, because, frankly, I feel like it's going to be a divisive thing. Some people enjoy that. Hey, you're screwed because the game says F you, you've run into, you've hit a meteorite and it's knocked a chunk of your hull out and your engines are gone. Screw you kind of thing. And some people, some people like those kind of fighting fantasy style stuff. So, me, I don't know, I'm, I'm torn. I, I don't know, I play a lot of it and then those sort of bits really wind me up, so... I don't know. Uh, you're, you're, I'm sure you're capable of coming to your own opinions as to whether you like the so what I what I have multi uh, on multiple occasions described as fighting fantasy bullshit. So if you like that, this game's got plenty of fighting fantasy bullshit. If you don't like that, uh, maybe give it a miss. But there you go. That's uh, this is out there Omega Edition. It's pretty cool though. I'm enjoying it. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. I will see you next time. <laughs>